Good morning. This morning we've come out, or we've come round a different route. So we're climbing up from a place called Sheep House Car Park that's behind me towards Rivington Gardens. Now, we're not going to go around Rivington Gardens today, but if you would like to have a look at this beautiful place in the northwest of England, there's a a couple of videos I've done a couple of years ago that have done quite well and it's Lord Lever Hume's Rivington and Rivington Gardens is an area that was built by Lord Lever Hume in about 1900 to 1925 it's full of follies and walkways and towers and lakes and it's all hidden away in this huge woodland on the side of a hill that goes up to Rivington Pike uh, and it's very very beautiful and uh, it's worth, it's worth a look at that. A lot of water's pouring off the side of the hill next to me. It sounds very, sounds like we're in the Lake District. I think it's going to be a decent day today. That's what the weatherman says. We've got blue skies above us. Now the sun is just behind the trees to my left hand side. I think in another probably half an hour or so, it will be above the trees and then we'll be in full sun. And it will be absolutely fabulous. So we're just going to take you on a little different route today. There should be some nice views involved. It is a beautiful spring morning. Spring's here. I'm so happy about this because we've had a long, long winter. And I think everybody got a bit fed up. But spring is here now. And the sun is beginning to come through the trees in front of me. This is beautiful. Look, you know, there's not an aeroplane. There's no contrails or anything. Well, tell me there's been another volcanic eruption like there was a few years ago when they stopped all the planes. That was great because it was like going back to when, I, in fact, I put a, a video up about that years ago. And it was like when going back to when my grandfather would have been a, alive and when there would have been no, not a blemish in a pure blue sky, no contrails, just a cloud, nothing to spoil it. We will never see that again. Generations after us will never see that again. Progress isn't always progress, is it? We've reached a spot now where there's a bench and a beautiful view. Now this view is completely or almost completely obliterated by pine trees. And it's funny because it, these must grow quite quickly because it's not long not many years since this was a panoramic vista across the Lancashire Plain towards the coast, the final coast, Blackpool. You can see the Lake District, North Wales, and now there's just a gap in the trees where you can look down towards Parbold Hill in the distance, see cars going up and down and green swathes of fields. I've come up here with Molly today. This is little Molly. Say hello, Molly. Now, oh, can we? We'll have to take that away with us, Molly. Molly's just turned 13 recently. Um, she comes out with me every day. I've not, I've, I've not had her for 13 years. I only got her six years ago. She's a rescue. Uh, she'd never, she hadn't been uh, mistreated or anything. I don't know how much love she'd been shown but the family just didn't want her anymore. I've, I'd, I've no idea why, because she's the most beautiful dog I've ever come across in my life, and everybody who sees her falls in love with her just because of her. She looks so cute, and she's got a beautiful temperament. And she's 13, and you got to that point in your life where, in her life, I should say, where I know that there isn't that long left, probably a couple of years. And you kind of think about it, you can't get it out of your mind sometimes. And I try not to... to think about it because I think what the hell would I don't know what I'll do without her. I really don't know what I will do without her it's scary I think all dog lovers will know what I mean she's so beautiful and she's just my best companion and comes out with me every day and that's Molly and I don't like show much apart from running about in my, my videos but I wouldn't enjoy being out in the countryside half as much without her. It's a funny thing, isn't it? I wish dogs lived longer than us, or at least as long. Anyway, she's here, and we'll do our best with her, for her. Come on, Molly, we're going this way. 
No, we're not. We're going down the path here. You'll enjoy it. Come on. We're heading on a different path than we usually do today. I don't usually come this way because it's, it's muddy. It's usually quite popular as the day goes on. Uh, so it's something we usually usually avoid because we don't like people because we're a miserable pair of buggers. We're just going off now because I think there's a little valley over here with a stream running through it. Beautiful, this, this, the brown leaves are once again crisp underfoot so that feels good and sounds good. The air is really clean and crisp and it drops off here into a little valley. And again, this is the valley that's carrying the water from the overflow of one of Lord Levy Hume's ornamental lakes up on the side of the hill. It's a feature unto itself and it's a great habitat for wildlife. I've put trail cams up here in the past. Got all sorts of things, deer, foxes, rabbits, squirrels, hedgehogs, mice, dogs, people. It's very quiet. No traffic noise. Isn't that a funny thing about traffic noise? Is that when you go out in the countryside, sometimes, usually, you, it's, it's quiet, it's dead quiet. But it's not dead quiet because there's a sound of traffic noise in the background. There's always this hum of traffic noise. And when I've been up into the Lake District, there's a place I go to called Dove Crag. And you walk away from, and there's a road called Kirkstone Pass. And as you walk away from Kirkstone Pass, after a couple of miles, you can still hear traffic in the background and then you round a corner, but you're not aware of it. You think everything's dead quiet. Then you round a corner where the fell side blocks out the road. And then it becomes immediately quiet. And the difference between quiet and quiet is absolutely astonishing. It's like when they say silence is deafening. It is, it's almost, there's almost a pressure behind it that presses on your ears. I can detect traffic noise in the distance if I stop and think about it. But I'm sure that if that was cut out, if all extraneous noises now were cut out, the difference would be phenomenal. This is beautiful. The, the, the leaves are still beautifully lime green. They haven't darkened as the summer's come on. Everything is so new and so fresh and so beautiful. There's not even much bird song up here. I can hear birds in the distance, but it is very quiet and very peaceful and very, very, very good for the soul. Good for my soul anyway. There's a blue tit in the tree in front of me jumping about. Good for him. Hope he has a nice day. The trees are really encroaching on the path here and it's the fine, small twigs that are over. So it's not a hindrance. It kind of they kind of just brush against you as, as you're walking through it. And that's nice because it's like you're not, you're never distanced from nature, you're in nature, you're kind of as one with it when you're kind of touching it. Completely surrounded by green above as well. We're lucky that we can do this every day. I mean, I, I do appreciate that. But having said that, I don't feel guilty about it because I've done my 50 years, but I am lucky that I can actually come out here every fine day, whereas you may be sitting in your office or your factory or your workplace, looking outside and thinking, oh God, I hope it's like this at the weekend so we can get out. So that's it. I always say to people, retire as early as you can and then make as much out of retirement as you can. There's a hawthorn here, completely covered in blossom. Oh, and a bird's just come out of it. I don't know what it was. The good thing about Molly is, well, one thing about her is she's a sniffing dog. We can't go, and it takes us forever to go anywhere. So the good thing about not having a tight, any, any pressing engagements is that I can let Molly do whatever she wants. She's actually a cross between a, a miniature schnauzer and a westie. She's a wowser. When I got her, her fur was very, very long. Um, she looked gorgeous I mean she looked absolutely gorgeous but we were going out up the Lake District and it was she was just muddy all the time and then I found when I had a cut she was like this pup she just started bouncing around everywhere and she's still the same she doesn't like it being hot and whenever we go and have a haircut um, and I don't let it get too long and I get it cut and I come out and she bounces she loves it she bounces everywhere it's fabulous to watch isn't it Moll? She enjoys life like no dog I've ever known. 
she's just so happy in her own place. This is nice, we've just come through a gate. We're not that far from the car now. We're gonna get in the car and head off somewhere else. And then after that, we might head off somewhere else. But we're just above a valley. It's quite a lot of trees and branches and things underfoot. But we need another, there are lots of little waterways because it's running off the hills. These are the foothills of the Pennines. It's running off those and running down. And the common denominator is the reservoir at the bottom. So most of these streams run down into the reservoir. Now I'm in a woodland now. This is one of those places. Do you remember when you were a kid and your mum and dad used to take you for picnics? And they all gave, you have this memory of what these picnic spots were like. These vivid memories, and it's just like that. There's this beautiful dappled light coming through the trees. And the grass is long and green. And it's quiet. And it just feels like I can spread out one of those tartan blankets and I'll sit down and have your sandwiches. Do people do that nowadays? That was a massive part of my youth, picnics. If you've got kids and you don't do it, and your kids just sit in front of a PlayStation or something like that, or even if you go out with them and take them to places, don't ever pay to go in anywhere. That's just madness. You don't need to pay to go anywhere. But bring them out and have a picnic. It will give them fabulous memories. And that's what it's all about as you get older. Speaking as an old man, to all the people who don't think you'd ever get old, and you will, if you're lucky, like I am, me and Mally are going to head back to the car now. We're going to get in the car and then we're going to drive somewhere else. We're going to go to places we've not been very often, or not lately, we tend to do the same things. But it is a nice day, and it says it's going to be a really nice day. The temperatures are going up. It's um, Friday, I think, Molly, I'm not sure. Is it like track of days? I think it's the 12th, I'm not sure. Anyway, then on that note, I will see you on the flip. Molly and me, say peace and love. <laughs>